Okay, we're going to look at spreadsheets a little bit more. Go ahead and click on our example spreadsheet to open that back up. You can see in here we still have all the data that we put in here. Now I'm going to press Command A or Control A on a PC to select all the data. You can see that doing that acts a little differently than it does in a document. You might expect it to select everything. Well, if you put the cursor over here and hit Control A or Command A, it does. If you place it here, it selects sort of everything in a symmetric row. But for now, for our purpose, we're just going to select our data, hit backspace to get rid of all of that. You might think, well, what about all my hard work? Well, sorry. Now, we're going to go ahead and type in here week one, week two, and then I'm going to show you, as you remember, if you highlight these two, click and drag, it'll go up to week 18. Now that's pretty handy, because now we have all of these weeks listed, and you see since it doesn't quite line up over here with this number, this allows us to show which week we would be on. Now up here I'm going to type week start. And here I'm going to go to Format, Merge Cells, Unmerge to undo that change that we had done last time. Type Homework Due On. Over here, Campus Closures. Make sure I spell that right. Then Topics, and then leave that there. Now I'm going to click in E1, hold Shift, click in B1 to highlight all of those. Then I'm going to come here to the alignment section and change it from left align to center align. And that puts all of these in the middle and makes them look a little bit nicer. Then I'm going to click on this B to make it bold just like in the Word document. Then I'm going to look for the underline and see it's not there and go, hmm, how could I do that? Now you probably remember if you go to help and keyboard shortcuts, you get this list of keyboard shortcuts. Now I want to underline, so I can see here it's Command U to underline. Now on a PC that would be Control U. So I type that and just like that everything is underlined. And that looks pretty good except for this. I'm not real crazy about how that is stacked. So I'm going to come up here and you see how the cursor changes. If you go to the cell between C and D and move the cursor back and forth, you'll get on the C side, there's a square with a downward pointing triangle. And then if you move to the right of that, the cursor will change to a right pointing arrow and you'll see a little section highlighted. If you click and drag, you can resize that cell. One other thing you can do, I'm going to go ahead and get that right pointing arrow again and click and drag to the left and to shrink that cell. When I move the cursor over that divider where I get the right pointing arrow, if I then double click, it'll auto resize everything so everything fits. Now looking over here at the list of weeks in the column labeled A, I kind of don't like the way that looks. I'd like it much better if they were centered. So I'm going to click on the A to highlight that entire column. Now I'm going to come back up here to the alignment section click on that and click on center. There, that's much better, don't you think? Well, sort of. I would also like it if these were bold. So I'm going to click and drag to highlight all of these, week 1 through 18, and then I'm going to click on this big B, and that makes those bold. Now doesn't that look lovely? I think it looks lovely. Now here, week start, we're going to go ahead and type a date. Now, the spreadsheet will sort of automatically format the date a little bit for us. So I'm going to put 8-26-2013. That was the start of this week. So then that means, of course, you add seven days. That takes us to September 2nd, 2013. And actually, that's the start of this week. This was the start of last week. Now, if you remember that little trick from before, you can highlight these two either by clicking in the first cell, B2, holding shift and clicking in B3 and that'll highlight both of them or with the cursor in say B3 you can hold shift and press up and that will highlight the top one and then you can see in the lower right hand corner you get this little blue square 
Now, if you put your cursor over that until you get the plus sign, and then click and drag all the way down, it'll automatically populate it so you get weak increments. Now, how useful is that? Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Um, it saves you a lot of typing. Now, over here, we're going to type in 09 01 2013. And you can see, even though you typed the zeros, they go away because it does auto formatting on the date. Now, this is when the first homework was due, as you are all aware, I hope. Now, if you type under here, 9 8 2013, or September 8th, the following week, and now we can do the same thing. If we select these two, so we put the cursor here by clicking in C2, then hold shift and click in C3, that highlights C2 and C3 and gives us this little blue square in the lower right hand corner of C3. Now if we hover over that with our cursor until we get the little plus sign, click and drag straight down, it'll auto populate and we can see that the final homework is due on the 29th. Now for campus closures, I'm not entirely sure when those all happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to highlight these cells. I'm going to click in H2, that's the cell 1, 2 under H, and then I'm going to go over to the column labeled G and go down to the row labeled 8, hold shift and click. And now that highlights this whole block here. Now I'm going to go to Format, Merge Cells, Merge All. Again, that is the menu item format, merge cells, merge all. And that creates this sort of text block looking section. Now I want to give this section a heading, so I'm going to click up here in H1, and then I'm going to hold shift and click in G1, and that highlights both cells. Then I'm going to come back up to format, merge cells, merge all. And now you can see I have a little divider, and then I have this open section where I can enter some text. Can't type and talk at the same time. Once I've typed campus closure, I'm going to click on that cell. I'm going to go to alignment and change it from left align to center align. And then I'm going to click the bold button to make that bold. Now I'm going to insert the campus close dates. Now looking at this, I see that they don't quite fit my cell. So what am I going to do? There are a couple things. I can click here between F and G where the cursor turns into a right facing arrow and drag to the left, shrinking the column F. But then that just moves everything over to the left. That's not quite what I wanted. So then I have to go between H and I until I get that right facing arrow, click and drag. And then that lets me resize it. Well, I don't really want it too much bigger than this, so I'm going to click in this cell here and change the font size down to say from 10 to about 9. There, that works quite nicely. Mostly. I'd really like it a lot better if Rather than having all this text down at the bottom where it looks like it's sort of fallen down, it was up at the top. Now how can I do that? Well up here we have alignment, but that really is our horizontal align, that's the left and right. Right next to it is the vertical alignment, and here we can pick the top alignment, middle alignment, or bottom alignment. It's currently on bottom alignment, and you can see that puts all the text down at the bottom of that cell. If we do middle alignment, it moves it to the middle. That looks a little bit better, but I think top alignment, yeah, that looks pretty nice. I kind of like that. So now we can see when these campus closures occur. And so we see that Labor Day, the campus is closed on the 2nd, Veterans Day, it's the 11th. And so now we could enter those in here. I'm not going to do that because that would take a lot of time and would be pretty boring. One thing I will do, however, is I'm going to make this a little bit more readable. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find E3 right here. That's the third column down, or third row down in the E column. And we're going to click there, and then we're going to click over under A3. And we're going to click this little paint bucket and pick this gray color. Now we can more easily visually differentiate week one from week two. 
Well, that's all fun, but we don't want to have to go through and select all of those because that would be tedious. So if we click here where it says A2 and then click where it says E3 to select all of these, then we can press Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC. The reason we can't go to Edit and Copy is the same as we discussed last week where it doesn't work in all browsers. So we just have to remember the shortcut key Control or C or Command C. Then we click here on A4. Then we can hold Shift and click down here on E19. That's all the way down at the bottom. And you can see it leaves this outline on these cells indicating that we've copied those. Now within the selected area, remember how we selected, if we click A4, hold Shift, and then click E19, and that gives us this selected area. Now if we right click in there, we have this option of Paste Special. Now if we go down to Paste Special, we have Paste Values, Format, all except borders, formula, data validation, and conditional formatting. We're going to talk about those, but for now I want to click on paste format only. And you can see that pastes this grayed area on all of these rows, and that makes this much, much easier to read.